12, 13, 14. I grunted doing push-ups. I was so close to body 3. Push-ups were hard. They hurt, and I struggled even past a few of them, but it wasn't like I had to worry about the pain after taking a nap, so there was a certain urge to just keep pushing in me. Home. June called out as the door opened once more his favorite burritos in his hand. I really need to talk to him about diversifying his diet. W welcome home June knee. I called out as I finished another push-up before flopping onto the floor with a grunt. I really needed to clean up the apartment a bit. It was gross down here. I grunted as I rolled up to my feet. Hey what's that? He asked, suddenly pointing towards the holster I was wearing in the small of my back. I was trying to get used to wearing it so I was going through most of the exercises while keeping it on. Holster. Went out to get it today. Wanted to be able to keep the gun on me while out in the city. You shouldn't be out there at all. It's dangerous. You still don't know anything. He practically growled at me. I can't stay inside forever June knee. I can't even stay cooped up for much longer. I tell him with a sigh. He growled seemingly wanting to argue that I definitely could but to my surprise he kept himself from snapping and instead flopped onto the couch with a groan as he stared up at the ceiling for a moment. You always got to be difficult. You just got out of the hospital. Out of a coma. You don't even know anything. I know. But I won't learn by hiding in the apartment until the outside comes in and drags me out. I have to learn, have to. Do. I tell him, which he grunts out sounding displeased. Yeah maybe. He grumbles but instead of arguing further he grabs his burrito. That holster can't have been cheap. Fifty eddies, for the knife sheath and the holster. I tell him and he chokes a bit on his burrito. Fifty? He sighed expensive. Probably worth that much but we could have found something a lot cheaper. He chides me. Oh. Sorry. I mutter realizing I probably had rushed ahead without actually bringing up the issue with June I had just decided to take care of the problem myself. Game a brain. I realized. I had thought of it like a quest almost. No, it's fine. Should have realized you would want something to hold them. Guess I was. He trails off going from sounding annoyed to tired. Guess I was trying to keep you inside longer. My bad. I think we're all just a little bit afraid, June Nee. You were afraid for me. And I'm a bit afraid in general. So thanks. For worrying about me. I offer instead as I settle on the couch and decide to do something I hadn't really done yet. I initiated a hug. He relaxed and returned the hug for a minute before seeming to have enough and pushing me off as he thrust a burrito in my face. Eat. Uck. I groaned but devoured my burrito. Dash. Now that I had a holster and sheath, I needed to get used to drawing from them. It was. Different. The back holster wasn't something I had ever used before, but it was natural after a bit of practice, and I had to admit, the holster itself made the practice a lot more effective. That and I was getting reflex XP a lot more consistently, as I kept practicing the draw. 100 reflex XP gained. I nodded pleased. While I wasn't gaining handguns XP at least I was getting something out of it. Finally after practicing my draw for a lot longer than I wanted to, I got the alert. Reflex leveled up. I sighed in pleasure at the alert. Finally. I could train my handguns and blade skill again now. I stretched a bit, my right arm was getting a little tired so I decided instead to switch to something else for a bit. I settled and started training squats. I would be ready for whenever something crazy happened. I wasn't just expecting it. I knew it would happen. June was in a gang. He would eventually run into trouble, and I was a cute young girl. Someone would make trouble for me eventually. When they did, they would get a knife in the kidneys and a bullet to the head. At least that was the plan. Gotta keep improving, gotta make sure I'm safe. Ringing. I stumbled during my squat nearly falling on my ass as I looked around for a phone. Only to realize the noise was coming from my head. Unknown number? I shrugged. Hitting accept. Hello? E e e e e. Moto. You really are alive. I ran into your cute brother today at a meeting and he let slip that you were awake. I can't believe he didn't tell anyone until now. And you didn't call me? Your best too? Your sister? The girl's voice squealed into my ear and I quickly messed with the settings to lower the volume a bit. Oh. It wasn't my ear, but it still kinda hurt. Um. Hello? She I it. 
Jun Chan wasn't kidding. You really do have amnesia. I can't believe that's an actual thing. She sounded shocked before her voice picked up. Forget that. I'm coming over. Jun Chan refused to let us see you in the hospital, but I have to see this. Bye bye. The call ended. That is my best friend? I asked a little disturbed. She seems way, way too high energy for me. I barely got a word in. I groaned as I stood back up. If someone was coming over, I should probably clean up a bit. I was sweaty from my exercise. Dash. I was just throwing a hidden burrito wrapper hidden in a dark corner into the trash when the door burst open. Seriously, did nobody knock? Moto Shaan. I was suddenly pulled into a hug by a shorter girl as she grappled onto me. Honestly all I could see was neon green hair because she had an actual full-sized mohawk and it was basically bashing me in the face. It was full of so much hairspray, or whatever these people used to make their mohawks in the future. Um. Hello? Really what else was I supposed to say? I didn't know this crazy girl. Oh girl wow you are different, she said, pushing me away to look up at me. Her face was chrome and neon. I thought. Her cheeks were chrome with neon etching on the chrome making her look like she had cat whiskers made of green neon. Was she trying to be a cat, or something else? Because mohawks don't really register cat to me. Wow, look at you. You look so. Standard. Has June not taken you out to get chipped, or at least a haircut? Your hair is so long. I blinked my hair had been down to my shoulder blades when I woke up. The nurses had cut it, while I was in the coma, but more just chopping it down. I had mostly just been throwing it into a ponytail. Is that bad? Not for me. I like my hawk, but you usually keep it a lot shorter girl. Did I? Jeez. It's so weird. Here. This is what we used to run around looking like, she said and her eyes shifted color before I got a text including a picture. I blinked because this was the first time I had seen a picture of myself from before. Motika was a street gang wannabe for sure. I noticed instantly how different we looked. She had been a lot more chromed than I was. I hadn't thought I had lost that much to the scavs, since I had been rescued I thought I just had my standard eye system lost. But no, she used to have a lot of chrome on her face like. This girl. Oh. What's your name? I asked. And that caused the girl's jaw to drop. Oh. She seemed a little hurt for a moment before shaking it off. I'm your bestie Hiromi. She offered acting cute and throwing her fingers against her cheeks. I just nodded and swiftly added her number into my system. There I added your number. I told her which did earn me an actual smile. Good. Now come on let's get out of here, everyone will want to see you are still alive. Everyone? I asked as I resisted her suddenly tugging on my arm as she attempted to drag me out of the apartment. Unfortunately, it was obvious she was stronger than I was and I was dragged out the door barely given enough time to grab my shoes as she wasn't listening to my arguments. This girl was definitely a force of nature. Then she dragged me out the front of the apartment and I did everything I could to stop her. You have to be kidding. I argued instantly, but it was no use. What? Come on you've ridden bitch on my bike plenty of times before. Get on. She argued as she finally let me go to hop onto a motorcycle. I knew this bike. It was a Yaiba Kusanagi. The coolest motorcycle in the game in my opinion, but of course she drove the goofy high-backed version that made a sleek killer bike look like something stupid. More importantly, I was 14 and Hiromi was definitely the same age. Also crazy. I didn't trust her to drive me anywhere. Not a chance. Is it close enough to walk? I could use the X or E. I squealed as she hopped off the bike long enough to drag me the rest of the way and practically push me onto the bike before hopping on and starting the engine. Literally starting to peel out despite me only sitting side saddle. Hiromi I. I screamed as she cackled driving out onto the street and slowing at a light before turning to me. Better get situated Toko we are going. While the idea of jumping off and making a run for it ran through my head. The light was already changing and I quickly settled behind her gripping her around the waist tightly so I wouldn't fall off as she started driving. I was wrong, she wasn't a crazy driver. She was a cyber psycho driver. I kept my eyes closed for most of the drive as she swung through traffic driving in between people and cursing and flipping off anyone that honked or got in her way. This is how I die. Crying like a bitch on the back of a motorcycle. 
Of course it didn't happen, other than constantly forcing other cars and vehicles to swerve to avoid hitting her we made it to wherever she was taking me. I shivered as we drove down deeper into the city. Kabuki? I muttered noticing the signs after I decided to be brave enough to open my eyes. Yeah. We are going to Hall. It's a Tiger Claw hangout. I guess you forgot all about it huh? Well it's great. Everyone will be glad to see you. I just blinked. Ho. Oh, why was that name familiar? Other than the obvious Pokemon reference. Hiromi slowed pulling down a small street and then slowing to drive around a pair of barricades that blocked off a small side street she slipped right through them and then drove through to a small open area full of Tiger Claw style cars and bikes. And a club. I was twigging pretty hard. I had definitely been here before in the game. I just couldn't remember why. Come on. Hiromi called as she already slipped off the bike and was urging me to follow. I took a deep breath and slipped off the bike. I wasn't feeling very confident right now. I didn't like this at all. I didn't know any of these people but some might know me. Worse, I didn't exactly fit in. Sure I had on my tiger claw jacket, but the rest of me was more normal. I didn't have neon or tattoos or anything that would show I was meant to be here. Plus I didn't really like bars. I followed after Hiromi who burst into the bar. I'm bar Arlak. And guess what bad bitch is back among us. Back from the dead. I grimaced. I was pretty sure I never died. I stepped in and interest in me was pretty light. Hiromi of course was chattering away like everyone was cheering and happy to see both of us. But I realized the truth. We were 14. Most of the people in the bar were a lot older, fully tiger clawed out, and had no interest in a bunch of noisy kids. I gave an apologetic bow to those that were glaring before hurrying over to Hiromi. Maybe less shouting, I urged her as I tangled my arm with hers pulling her away from a brewing argument with an older guy that was complaining at her for yelling so loud. She scoffed at him, threw him a finger but let me pull her away, and then instantly turned it on me. Tugging me towards a corner where I noticed younger teens were hanging out they were all dressed up like gangers but I could only see them as wannabes. I realized that is probably what they were. Future chaff for the gang. If any of the real tiger claws needed something done, they could go grab a kid and have them do it. Huh? Made sense I guess. Yo yo yo. Look who's back. Hiromi called out here instead and actually got some interest as I was tugged toward the back table. Hey wait. Is that Motoko? Wait you're right. The teens called out in surprise at my appearance. Thought you got flatlined. No, just a coma. I told them as Hiromi pushed me into a seat. She also got amnesia like on the TV. Can't remember anything. She didn't even know me. Seriously? That's hilarious. So you don't know who I am? A boy asked, wearing a jacket with tiger stripes and a set of clunky almost ill-fitting sunglasses. I'm sorry I don't know. I guess some of us were friends? It's nice to meet you all. Again? I answered amnesia made it a little confusing. PFFT. This is great. Hey you really don't remember? You owe me twenty dollars eddies, you know? Fuck off Malcolm. She doesn't owe you shit. Another spoke up punching the boy in the shoulder earning a yelp from him. She doesn't remember shit huh? That's rough. The boy offered. He seemed the best dressed of the group. Everything seemed to actually fit him unlike most of the others. I am itchy, short for Ikinos. We've run together since we were kids. Bit wild you don't remember. Anyway Malcolm is cool, just don't listen to anything he says. Ever. Fuck you Chum. You already know Hiromi, our crazy bitch. You know it. Hiromi called out as she grabbed a drink from the table and downed it, uncaring at the yelp from Malcolm as it had been his drink. And that is... I can introduce myself Itchy. Amida, we never met. I joined this crew about three months ago. He offered. The boy was larger, but not from muscle. He was just a bit fatter than most of the others. He also had a net wreath on his head. And a case that I recognized as a net deck. Mostly because I had seen one while channel surfing. The massive thing was old, massive and banged up, but it was a net runner kit. Nice to meet you. I offered simply which he returned with a nod. Um nice to see you all too. Hey. Look at this itchy. Our Helian Motoko is all demure and sweet now. Hiromi Mock cried as she pulled me into a side hug. Next thing you know she is going to start talking about becoming a corpo and working in an office. That earned a chuckle from everyone but I shook my head. 
Probably not. I don't think I would fit into an office well. I've heard about how cutthroat the politics are in those places. Huh? Only got a few memories left but still remembers how fucked up corpus are. At least you got some sense. Hiromi tells me with a laugh. Everyone settled in then and started swapping some stories about me from before. Apparently Motoko really was a hellion, the kind of girl that was fully on board with committing any crime to get her way and fully on board the tiger claws. I had actually been the one to drag Hiromi into the tiger claws orbit. Before she had been a girl that kept her head down. Go figure. Learning a bit about me was nice. Even if I refused the drinks. Instead just grabbing some weird carbonated drink from the vending machines in the back of the club. I snorted into my drink in the middle of Malcolm talking about him clepping a Rayfield Cali burn with a tech jack he had clepped from a techie he had done a job for only to have to bail on the car and run for his life from a kill team of Arasaka ninjas come to kill him. No one around the table believed him for an instant and I had to assure Hiromi I realized he was lying as well as she had started looking at me worriedly once he started the story. That is a new face. A voice called out from behind me and instantly I saw Ichi stand from his seat and offer a bow. Shobo Summer. This is Motoko, an old face actually. She just got out of the hospital. He offered and I turned. The man was wearing a white suit and a purple bow tie. I didn't recognize him though. So I relaxed. Nice to meet you. I offered with a small bow of my own from where I sat. Humph? I don't recall, Ichi. I have some work for you. Come along, he demanded and turned to walk away, Ichi urgently slipping out from behind Malcolm to hurry after learning Hiromi grumbling. I know it's important to help out Shobo Summer and all, but it always annoys me that he only wants to use Ichi. We can all work, you know? She offered before sighing and leaning back. All right I guess we should head out. I better take Motoko home before Jun-chan comes and kills me. Hell no. I tell her instantly pushing at her face as she moved to stand up. You are drunk. You've been drinking for the last three hours. What? I drive better drunk. Somehow I don't believe you. Keys. I demand from her holding out my hand. What? I'm not giving you my shard key. I drive just fine drunk you gonk. PFFT. Hiromi started laughing at me as I rolled my eyes. You aren't driving until you sober up. I tell her firmly. Not letting you kill yourself in an accident, I said firmly no give whatsoever. Something about what I said though made her start smiling. Fine. You can just drive then. She offered with a grin as she pushed into my personal space. You haven't had anything to drink so you are good to drive aren't you? I don't know if I even know how. I informed her calmly. Earning a wide smile from Hiromi. Perfect. No time like the present to learn. Come on Motoko. Time to learn to drive. She offered with a drunk grin. I don't feel comfortable with this. I told her as she dragged me out of my chair and towards the front. Dash. So driving a motorcycle was kinder. I mean it wasn't that complicated. Mostly thanks to Hiromi practically jumping off the bike wanting to throw hands with anyone that looked at her funny. But I got the hang of it after a few minutes of driving real slow around the block that club was on. More interesting than that. I got a new skill. Driving experience gained. Skill not unlocked, no XP gained. Driving unlocked. The thing was driving wasn't a skill in the game. At all. Which had thrown me off a little. I had been going along with the understanding that my system was Cyberpunk 2077. But if driving existed and to my pleasure it existed under the reflex stat. Then what other skills could I try and pick up? Testing would be required. I pulled into the parking garage for the apartment parking the bike with a sigh. Not too bad. You drive like an old granny. Hiromi offered behind me as she laughed and hopped off the bike. You drive like a drunk. Even when you aren't drunk. Which is why I drive better drunk. No one drives better drunk you gonk. I sigh and then have to quickly grab her and pull her away as she made a move to get back on the bike. Whoa whoa whoa. What are you doing? Going home? Not a chance, I hissed. You are drunk and you aren't driving around on a motorcycle. Come on you can crash at my place. Or a sleepover? We haven't done that in ages. How cute. I threw her an annoyed look as I walked out of the parking garage and across the street to the apartment. We rode the elevator up with Hiromi chattering away about nothing in my ear. June thankfully was home when I got there. 
thought Hiromi would be the one to drag you out. Make sure you call when you are going to be gone so long next time. He ordered instantly as I walked in which I threw him a thumbs up. That was fair. Hiromi is going to crash here tonight. She got drunk and I won't let her drive home. June gave me a weird look. But she drives better drunk. No one drives better drunk, I hissed at him even as Hiromi whooped at June agreeing with her. So she is going to claim the couch. Nah, we can share your bed. Hiromi countered, already sauntering past me throwing June a wink. Unless Jun-chan wants to share instead. Nope. He replied instantly shutting her down much to my relief, and to Hiromi's now displeasure as she pouted. Fine. She huffed heading into my bedroom. Sorry jun Ni. No, it's fine. I'm used to her being around. It feels. Normal. Did you have fun? Hmm. Fun? Not exactly. It was nice to meet new people and former friends I guess. But the club wasn't really my thing. He blinked at that. Really? Yeah alcohol kinda smells bad, and the cigarettes everyone was smoking made the club a little smoky. The music was okay. But that's about it. Huh? Another change I guess. Good. He offered with a nod before I followed after Hiromi who to my surprise was already half naked. Do you want to borrow some clothes? I offered only for her to laugh at me. Just climb and chew. We haven't had a sleepover in forever. I sighed. Doing just that after taking off my jacket and shoes. Sliding in I could smell the alcohol on her breath as she muttered sleepily to me. Eventually she did pass out, and once she was snoozing on my shoulder drooling lightly did I choose to sleep and the timer for how long popped up. Dash. The next morning I woke up just like I had been since the hospital feeling great and ready to start my day. Hiromi was not. She grumbled and groaned when I prodded her, so I just covered her in a blanket and left the room to start my morning exercise. After a quick breakfast of hallway vendor burrito. Gross. I got to it. Using the 25% XP sleep buff to my advantage as I ran through my gun drawer. Now that reflex had finally leveled up I needed to get handguns and blades up there to match. An hour later Hiromi came practically crawling out of my bed with tangled mohawk and tired eyes to see me staring out the window constantly drawing my gun from my back holster. Damn. She muttered a bit blinking before walking over and grabbing a drink out of the fridge. At least it wasn't alcoholic. What are you doing? Exercise. I chirped back at her happily as I continued my work. I was definitely getting better at this, but the XP was starting to come in really slowly. There was only so much XP I could grind from drawing my gun and never getting a chance to shoot it. Might have to talk to June about that. He did say to bug him about stuff I needed instead of running off and doing it myself. Looks boring. It can be. I offer as I finally decide to switch from gun to blade. Holstering the gun for the last time I took a moment to stretch out before my left hand went to do the same thing with my knife, draw and a stab. Thankfully I could train blades a lot easier since I didn't have to worry about shooting holes in the wall with it, letting me keep the XP grind coming. I was almost at level 2 blades. You are better with a gun than you were before. You were kinda hopeless, but you are worse with a knife. Hiromi eventually commented as she watched me practice for a minute. Really? I was good with knives? No but you were good with a katana. You taught me some things after all. She mentioned which surprised me. I didn't know Hiromi used a katana, she didn't look like she was armed at all really. Her don't carry it around. I'm not part of the tiger claws yet. Some of the men don't like it when people walk around with their weapons. I only use it when I want to show off. Cool. I might have to get one. Oh. Right. You don't have your katana anymore. She muttered looking sad as she thought about it. Was it special? I asked as I continued to work through my stabs. I don't really remember it. It was your mom's. You carried it with you everywhere, used to piss off the gangster claws, but you are generational, so they always had to leave you alone about it. Oh. I guess the scabs took it then. Yeah. Probably hawked it at a drop off too. Fuckers. I shrug I'll either find it again, or I won't. Do you have a picture of it, or was it special in any way? No. Sorry. It was a pretty standard Arasaka Katana. I doubt you will ever see it again. Or even know it from any other. Damn it. Hiromi cursed sounding pretty upset about it. Don't stress Chum. I don't even remember it to miss it. I'm just glad I'm alive. 
The katana is just a katana. Yeah. Yeah I guess. She offered. You are the most boring amnesiac I ever met, she said, sounding amused. I'm just exercising. I got out of a coma a few weeks ago, remember? My muscles were all jello. And a knife? The city can be dangerous. I mean I was kidnapped apparently. I want to be able to protect myself. I'll switch to push-ups and other stuff soon. I told her as I continued drawing and stabbing. I wanted that sweet sweet level up. I grunted as I continued on, my arms tiring, but I was gonna push for the grind. 100 blades XP gained. Blade skill level up. 1 perk point gained. I slowed to a stop. My hand on my knife had grown confident. I knew for a fact I could do all sorts of things with it now. My control and confidence in my knife work had gone up. But what was a perk? Like in the game with the perk tree? I hadn't seen anything like that. I quickly pulled up the stat screen. And my reflex stat was blinking. I clicked it, and then blades was blinking. Clicking that I saw that I had an option. There was a little icon that revealed a list of perks I could choose from. All had something to do with blades. I read through a few of them. Concealed blade. Letting me better hide a knife on my body to bypass some scrutiny. Parry. To better deflect incoming blades, which I noticed had a grayed out perk below it, and then another one below that. I followed the tree until it came to the end. Bullet deflection. Cool. But I kept reading for now. Wanting to know what other options there were. Lots of them looked interesting but a lot of them were very niche. What I did notice was a perk that actually had some use outside of me fighting with a blade. Ambidextrous, use either hand as competently as the dominant hand. This was a perk that would buff anything. And could be pretty useful since I was training for a knife in my off hand. I decided. Accepting that perk and a moment later my left hand felt like a wave of cold ran down it, and then as if it was waking up from falling asleep my brain seemed to read the limb as. Different. I blinked away the stat screen, and with a bit of a knife trick that I felt pretty confident with. I swapped the knife to my main hand and drew my gun with my off hand. It was just as quick as the main hand even if the holster slowed me down a bit as it was designed for right hand draw. I shifted using my left hand to aim and adjust and it all came naturally to me. What are you doing now? Hiromi asked as she lay on the couch her chin in her hand. I'm ambidextrous. I tell her, sounding a little surprised about it. What no you're not. You're a righty. Hiromi says confidently. Maybe I was. But I'm not anymore. I told her showing how firm I was as I continued playing around with aiming the pistol and knife in concert. Huh? I guess the scavs messed up your brain. I guess that's a good thing? Yeah it's cool. I tell her smiling as I once more swapped knife and gun with a showy toss of the knife to switch hands before sheathing and holstering them. You look bored. You done? Not really, but I can take a break. You're my guest right now. PFFT. We are chooms. I'm not your guest. But alright. Come on I want to get some chow. Okay. Dash. After a brunch where we sat people watching as we ate Romy finally said she had to get home so her parents wouldn't kill her. We shared a hug and I waved as she drove down the street. I winced. She was still a terrible driver. I went back inside and got back to grinding. Body was close to level 3. If I remember right. That was the starter score for V in the game. If I could reach 3, I would be at a baseline that I knew was fairly competent. Unfortunately the morning workout didn't push me into level 3 just yet. And I took a break to take a shower and head back outside for a while. I figured doing some aerobic exercise would be a good change. So I decided to start jogging around the block. The massive concrete stairway that led to the level above was used as part of the path. Jogging up the steps to the midpoint before going down on the other side spit back out on the same side of the block. It was hard, my legs ended up burning, but it was great exercise. Plus as I jogged I got another skill. Athletics experience gained. Skill not unlocked, no XP gained. Athletics unlocked. I smiled. That would be super useful. Especially if I ever had to run away. It was also under the body tree. So that was nice. I kept it up. Jogging around the block once before I was too tired to do any more. But I knew I would go take a nap and probably do it again right after. Of course as I was heading in, I heard a word that stopped me dead. 
scavs again. I shifted. That was a word I had been hypersensitive to. Kidnap and try to murder steal my body once shame on you. Do it twice, shame on me. I stopped but the two working class guys were just grumbling. H hey excuse me? I asked, deciding to interrupt. I walked over to where they were both eating from a vendor. Both guys gave me a suspicious look as I approached. What do you want, kid? If you think we are easy marks, get lost. No nothing like that. I heard you say scavs. I had a run-in with them a while back so I'm a little. I trailed off while wiggling my hand. They aren't set up around here or anything are they? I honestly couldn't help the hint of fear that entered my voice as I spoke. The two men kept a look on me for a moment before the one that said scaff to start finally spoke. Not around here thankfully. I came across a nest while on a job fixing some apartment lights. Over in H2. You are plenty far away from those bastards girl. H2. Mega building H2. I repeated to myself nodding. What floor were they on? Both men looked at each other. Listen kid, I don't want to be responsible for you going off and trying something stupid. Those fuckers are dangerous. I know some tiger claws. Might be worth it to them to hit them scavs, that's all. Not a fan of them. At all, I said and the guy hesitated a bit before shrugging. Floor 24. A whole side of the building is blocked off by them. They had hooked into the power supply which is why the lights were failing. But that's all I know. Don't be stupid. Thanks. Really. Thank you. I offer them a bow and turn and start jogging off. H2. Floor 24. The gun in the small of my back felt heavy. Dash. Hey Juni. I call out as my brother gets home late that night. Oddly he usually stays out most of the night. Emoto. He greets me back checking me over and seeming pleased with the sight. Hey Juni. Is there a place I can go to practice shooting this? I asked nodding towards my back as I continued to do push-ups on the floor. My question startling June for a moment as he thinks. We can go shooting yes. We will go tomorrow. Together. I looked up in surprise at his words. Don't you have work? I can take a day off. And since I will be going to shoot, I can tell my boss that I am taking the day for training. He offered with a smile. Looking pleased with himself about his plan. Nova. Thanks Juni. It is what I am here for. He assures me before heading into the room to relax. He really wasn't though. I wanted to say. That he didn't have to be completely responsible for me. But I was still like a child even if I wasn't actually amnesiac. Even if I still knew things this wasn't my earth. This was Night City. The rules here were different. I mean I was still working on prices for stuff to make sure I didn't overpay again. I turned back to my push-ups just a few more, and I should get body three. Just a few more. The next morning June slept in like normal, and I continued to work out. I went for a jog, to get more athletic sex P with the 25% buff enjoying the way the numbers kept going up. And finally I got the alert. Body leveled up. I whooped mid-jog as I cheered and danced around. I did it. At body 3, my body was now the equivalent of a bare minimum V. Hell yeah. I wiped the sweat from my brow and took a moment to look over the edge of the street into Cherry Blossom Market. It was pretty with all the trees. I would have to get some actual exercise equipment soon. Or maybe a gym membership. I wonder if the Tiger Claws have some gym that I can go to? Or use? Even if I am super hesitant to be any more connected to a gang than I already was. I kinda hated the gangs. I sighed and turned around. Time to get home. Maybe June would be up. June was awake and eating his breakfast burrito as I wandered in which I couldn't help but roll my eyes at. Just because the vending machine was right outside our door June. Morning June knee. Morning, he mumbled, still waking up. Good, it gave me time to slip into a shower. After June was ready to go we wandered out onto the street and then into the parking garage before he walked up to a motorcycle. Another modded Kusanagi I noted, although it was absolutely covered in stickers, and tiger claw signs. Come on. He ordered hopping on and I sighed. The stupid high back on these always looked dumb. Why mess with the Kusanagi? It was based on Akira's bike. It was already perfect. Sure sure. I grumbled as I settled in behind June and we were off. Fortunately he was a better driver than Hiromi. Unfortunately that wasn't saying much. 
I kept track of where we were going but we were heading towards Little China. We stopped at a little gated building deep inside the city and there were plenty of tiger claw bikes already waiting. Come on Toko don't fall behind. Yep, I agreed seeing plenty of men and women all wearing tiger claw tattoos and none of them looked gentle. It was as we were walking into the little walled compound that I realized where we were. It was the tiger claw dojo. I remember the mission, you had to save a guy in the basement but the interior was all swords and equipment. Nice. Unfortunately we didn't walk into the dojo. Instead walking to the side and entered into what I would have thought was an apartment building of some sort, but we kept going, through dark trash filled hallways, until June stopped at a certain apartment. Inside the apartment it was set up like a reception area. The tiger claws milling around all looked up at our entrance but relaxed when June headed to the woman sitting behind a set of bulletproof glass. I need an alley, and ammunition he said and the receptionist took a moment, her eyes glowing before she nodded. Welcome Mr. Kusanagi. Alley 12 is open for you. You know the rules about ammunition, she said simply and June nodded, leading me through another door that led to some stairs heading down. Then we entered a shooting range. All of it set up for the tiger claws as every person inside besides me was a member. Ha underground secret shooting range? Cool. June led me through but I was definitely getting some looks as he led me to our stall which already had two boxes of ammunition sitting on the floor and after June checked them he went back to an alcove along the wall and grabbed a different box. Load up, he shouted over the sounds of gunfire and I nodded. I guess hearing protection wasn't really a concern in the future. I only had the single magazine for my unity, which was already loaded, but June pulled out his own unity I noticed and dropped a quartet of extra magazines onto the table. June quickly split two from the number and pushed them to me as I smiled at him. And then he just started firing. I watched for a minute as he emptied his magazine hitting pretty often, although his aim wasn't super great. Well get to it. He called out and I realized I had just been watching when I should be shooting. Grinning, I closed my eyes for a moment putting my unity back into my holster. Then I opened my eyes, whipped a hand behind me, grabbed my unity and drew it just like I had been training. Three rounds went down range. Which instantly got me an alert. 100 handguns XP gained. Which was awesome. That had been an instant XP boost. I continued doing the same thing. Standing straight and putting my handgun into my holster before quick drawing it and sending a few rounds down range. Pleased that with the new complexity of actually aiming and firing, I was getting more reflex XP too. Juno was just firing down range mechanically. He was definitely more accurate than I was, but I think when it really came down to it, my muscle memory would be more useful than his rigid quick shots. June Nee. Don't forget to practice your draw fire as well. I called out over the din while I was switching to a new magazine, and he seemed to take what I said for a moment before rolling his eyes. But he did practice it a few times and his accuracy sharply declined. Well that is what happens when you actually have to draw a gun and fire it in a hurry. Still I was very happy, because XP was rolling in, and very soon I got another alert. Handgun skill level up. One perk point gained. I barely managed to keep myself from cheering. Another perk point. I guess I got one whenever I leveled a skill to two. I took a moment while reloading my magazines to check the options. I was right. All of the perks this time had something to do with handguns. Most of them were pretty expected. Fast reload quick draw. That sort of thing, but there were a bunch more. The options were pretty huge, although 99% of them were grayed out needing higher stats, a prerequisite perk, some even needing perks from other perk trees. Handgun design needed a perk from crafting skill tree for example. While it was all neat, I picked quick draw. I was already training it, and honestly in a gunfight getting your gun out and shooting faster than the other guy is a big thing. The moment I took it I felt that same feeling as if I simply knew how to do what I had been doing better. This time when I finished reloading the magazine and slotted it into the pistol when I slipped the gun back into its holster. I knew exactly how to do it. No more guessing or just practicing ineffectually. No this time when I opened my eyes my hand and body simply moved without conscious thought. Habit ingrained through the system. And three rounds shot off in just a second all three hitting my target within just a heartbeat. June didn't notice, but that was okay. 
because as I got an alert for reflex XP I smiled and simply did it again and again. My accuracy wasn't perfect, but the fact I was drawing my gun and firing so fast was its own reward. A junkie or scav trying to take me for some cyberware would find a gun pressed against their throat in a heartbeat. I smiled at the idea. Kid. A voice called out from behind us, and June and I both turned, seeing an older man grizzled and graying in his five o'clock shadow. Yes? We both asked at the same time, but the guy was looking to June. Who's the girl? The old man demanded as June looked from me to him. Little sister. June called out loud enough to be heard over the gunshots and the man looked pleased. Girl. You know how to fire anything else? He asked and I shrugged. I mean handguns should go for anything that is a handgun, but I didn't know what this guy was talking about. A second, he demanded turned and wandered out to a back room that I hadn't noticed, when he came back out a few moments later he was carrying a submachine gun. You ever shot one of these? He demanded and I shook my head. Go on then. He ordered handing it over along with a few magazines which he handed to June after a moment. I shrugged. Took a look over the gun. Finding the safety I aimed it down the alley flipped the safety and pulled the trigger. A few seconds later I adjusted myself because for a submachine gun it kicked like a mule and fired again. Huh? I heard him grunt from behind me sounding unimpressed. As he noticed, my grouping was terrible. Assault experience gained. Skill not unlocked, no XP gained. Assault unlocked. I nodded. Assault was the tree for rifles and submachine guns. Not sure why it wasn't split, but whatever. I still had more in the mag and so I continued to feel the gun out, aiming small groupings, single shot and a few bursts, grabbing the mags from June as I went. This was another skill after all, and another skill under reflex. So slowly between the consistent alerts about the assault skill reflex was getting buffed up. It was certainly a lot faster than body had. I ignored the man. Not sure what his game was but I was going to milk this for all it is worth. I finished the third magazine, and I felt how close I was. I turned and grabbed the ammo box, swiftly filling up a magazine and funnily getting a bit of reflex XP from how fast I was doing it. Then I grabbed the submachine gun, reloaded and fired again. Assault skill level up. I blinked. That was what I was waiting for. Yeah that was the good shit. I stopped shifting my body holding myself differently to adjust for the kickback. Cradling the stock against a different part of my shoulder and holding the trigger differently on my finger. This time my rounds zipped out and while I still wasn't where I wanted to be, I was hitting consistently, and my grouping was much tighter. I finished up the magazine pleased I was able to get another XP alert, before I stopped. Thanks, that was fun. I told him and the old man was looking between me and the electronic targets with an interested look in his eye. You never shot something like that before, he demanded but it wasn't a question. Not really. No, I only shot my pistol for the first time here. I tell him. He huffed to laugh. You have a killer's draw with that pistol. I've never seen a kid with a draw like that before. He turned to June bring her around more often. She has talent. He says taking the submachine gun and the magazines back after and heading back into the room he had disappeared into. What was that? June asked after a moment and I shrugged. I honestly didn't know either. I guess he noticed how fast my quick draw was? I shrugged. It didn't matter. We still had more ammo in the boxes and I wanted to make sure I milked every experience point I could out of this. I settled back into quick draw my pistol and this time June actually noticed just how fast it was. How are you doing that? He demanded of me, looking shocked at the sight. Oh you have to sorta of do. This? I offered slowing my draw to show the motion. I ended up spending the next hour helping June with his quick draw, walking him through on how to improve his own. The perk had given me a pretty comprehensive knowledge of what to do to improve at it. Sure I didn't get to practice any more which sucked, but June got a lot quicker with his, and so I figured that was a fair trade. I needed to make sure June stayed alive in Night City 2 after all. Dash. Afterwards June drove us both home although he was quiet all the way out of the gun range and back home. We pulled up inside and after I washed my hands off from the gunpowder smell I noticed he was still being quiet. You okay June me? You never used guns before. You were hopeless at them, he said eventually from where he was sitting back on the couch fully splayed out.
How did you know how to quick draw like that? Don't know? Made sense I guess. I've been practicing for a while. It's only been what, a week since I gave you the gun? I shrugged. I don't remember days blur together when you exercise for a few hours before going to sleep to recover. Is that bad? I asked, and he seemed to actually think about that for a moment. No. It makes you safer. I just. You are a different person. It made me realize that the Motoko that I knew. She doesn't exist anymore. I have to learn about. This Motoko. I flinched back at that. I knew I would be different from street kid Motoko, but yikes that was pretty harsh. I'm sorry. You didn't do anything. Don't be sorry Toko, you survived. That is all. That is all I ever wanted, he said rising up from his slouch to pull me into a hug. Finding you like that was the scariest moment in my life. I nodded and hugged him back, but my mind was just focused on what he just said. June had been the one to rescue me from the scavs. What had really happened that day? I knew from the games most people weren't rescued from scavs. Most people were just chopped up and killed. Dash. Bright and early the next day I went out for a run, athletic spooey. I grinned as I jogged up and down the concrete stairs around the block. While I still wasn't great I could jog for a lot more than I could have before. Meaning my athletics XP kept dinging in. Athletics skill level up. I smiled as I hit level 1 with athletics. It did seem to take longer than some of the other skills, but then again I wasn't really doing anything crazy, just jogging around a block and up and down some stairs. I continued, but it was on the last quarter of the route when it happened. A gunshot rang out practically on top of me and I dropped to the ground, rolling into the sheltered entrance to a shop, that was unfortunately closed. I wanted to curse but making noise was asking for attention. I kept myself low, handgun in my hand as I waited for something to happen. Slowly I heard more shouting and aggressive calls from the alleyway. The damn alleyway that I had to walk past to get home. I couldn't even turn around because the alleyway had another exit on the north side of the block that I would have to walk past. I waited for a while, slowly peeking out from the edge of the shop to see if something would happen. Just shouting for a while, and then it quieted down. Slowly I crept out. Which was stupid. I knew it was stupid but I did it anyways. I slowly crept out to the edge of the alley and peeked over for just a second, before doing it more slowly. Nothing. I breathed a sigh of relief, whatever was happening it was happening deeper in the alley. I felt my hand sweat. Do I go help? From the noise someone had been shot. No. I'm not a hero, and I'm not a cop. And I had nothing to really protect myself with. Who knows how many people there were. So instead I decided to sneak past the alley and get home. If I made it back to the apartment I would be safe and this craziness would be on the outside. But just as I started to slide out from along the edge of the alley I saw it, someone walking around the corner. I dropped hiding behind some trash on the edge of the alley and just prayed it was enough. Through the slats of an old pallet that I was hiding behind I noticed that the woman checking the alley had a fucking machine gun held at her waist. I swallowed and kept motionless pretending to not be there as she checked the alleyway before turning and heading back in. A fucking machine gun. Once she was gone I rose slowly and snuck my way across the alleyway entrance before hurriedly but as quietly as I could getting back to the apartment. As I finally felt the door shut behind me safe behind the apartment door in the security gate, I feel like I could breath again. I exhaled and shook, setting my pistol on the living room table and just sitting down for a while with my head on my knees. Dash. Turns out I got something besides nightmares that thankfully I couldn't experience any more out of the situation. I hadn't noticed because I was freaking out, but I got a new skill. Ninjutsu experience gained. Skill not unlocked, no XP gained. Ninjutsu unlocked. Honestly I wish I had thought about training stealth before this. It was. Powerful. A truly powerful skill. And something I was going to have to figure out a way to level because I liked the idea of not being seen by gonks wanting to kill me. There was a problem though. Okay I can level ninjutsu through stealth training. But how do I level cool? I mean. Cool? What kind of stat was fucking cool? I grumbled about it as I rested on the couch feeling a little wrung out after everything. I guess. Well I could level reflex by training the sub skills, so I guess for now I would just train stealth and hope I would figure out a good way to level cool later. I shrugged it was as good a plan as any. 
I mean the only other skill tree that I knew was under cool. In the game it was called cold blood. Which. I could guess how I leveled that one. Murder. I guess cyberpunk in this game a system was trying to tell me murder was cool. Right. I shrugged and decided to take the matter into my own hands. Stealth huh? Well I had level 1 cool. So I might as well get stealth up to level 1. It could save my life in the future. So I headed outside and started sneaking around. Doing my best not to be seen to slip close to people that were talking so I could listen in, and basically doing anything I could think of to raise my stealth skill. So what if I creeped a couple of people out? They weren't important. As I snuck around the block and market, I did manage to get a few alerts for cool when I successfully snuck up on people without them noticing but as I was past ninjutsu leveled faster. Ninjutsu skill level up. It popped in and I shivered as I went from a child trying to sneak around to, well a child trying to sneak around, but I was quieter about it. Yay me. Ringing. I jerked as I had been heading home when a call came in. Hiromi. Hiromi? I responded. Motoko. I've been waiting forever and ever. Where are you? I came to pick you up to have some fun. She instantly yelled out full force causing me to wince. How it caused a similar pain to being too loud despite there not actually being any sound. Ugh stupid future tech. I'm on my way back now. I was out. Exercising. I offered lying through my teeth. No way was I going to admit to foe sneaking around people. That would be weird. Ugh hurry. Everyone is ye eating. She whined and I broke out into a jog. All right all right I'm almost at the front, I said as I turned the corner from beside Cherry Blossom Market, and hurried down the block towards home. I could see Hiromi's Kusanagi revving and waiting at the entrance causing people to avoid her bike that was sitting on the side of the sidewalk. Really Hiromi? At least don't rev your bike if you are on the sidewalk. People are freaking out. I hurry over and she gives me a once over. A. Hey. I guess it'll do. You really need some new threads tune. She offers before hiking a thumb behind her. Now get on. All right all right. I repeated as I hopped on and clutched her tight as she peeled out from the sidewalk. That mark was never going away. And we raced down the street in a blur. Too fast. I squealed as she seemed to be in an actual hurry this time. Ha 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 ha. Was my only answer. Dash. Nice of you to finally make it Hiromi. Ichi called out as we pulled into a small parking lot. The rest of the gang was already there. Malcolm smoking a cigarette while Omar Ada was already messing with his suitcase-sized cyber deck. What's going on? I asked, realizing that they were all armed, and even Hiromi had an actual katana sheathed behind her back. We are running a gig. Hiromi offered with a smile. And I instantly frowned at her. Hiromi, relax Motoko. It's not a gig. We are going to make some medis though and Hiromi wanted you cut in. You are still one of us, even if you don't remember so I accepted. Sorry for the short notice. He offered with a smile. What are we doing? Snatch and grab. We got this gonk who is definitely not but sort of a wannabe Valentino. He has been trying to push some drugs up here in Kabuki. Ichi replied. Kabuki is tiger claw territory. Obviously. Hiromi added for my benefit which I nodded already knowing. So we are going to clip his ride. Hopefully his product is inside, and we deliver it back to the club. Shoba Summer will take care of the rest. That sounds dangerous. Is he alone, or does he have guards? I asked. This is child's play stuff Motoko. We clipped so many cars when we were younger. Hiromi offered with a giggle and a side hug that didn't at all reassure me. Not in Elvarado, which is why I am here, Omaida said cutting off Hiromi. It's got a security system. I'll break in, but I'll need some serious time. You guys will try and clip the security shard. Right. So I don't think we will be able to get the shard easy. Not on this guy, so we are the distraction. Our job is to keep our gonk Gonzales busy. So we try it stealth first, but if we don't break the security fast enough we distract the guy and keep him from bothering Omaida. This sounds really dangerous. I muttered and got a shoulder push from Hiromi. Don't be a scaredy cat. This is so stupid. I muttered, but I was in. This was Night City. Crime wasn't just something that happened, it was a fact of life, and I couldn't pull a David Martinez. I wasn't in Arasaka Academy or something like that. If I wanted money I would have to earn it. 
somehow. All right here is the plan. Right now Gonzalez is wandering the dock area selling. We keep an eye on him. As long as we don't act stupid he won't even notice. We are supposed to be here after all. This gives Omaida time to set up and hopefully clip the ride. If Gonzalez starts heading back to the car we distract him, either as buyers, or if that doesn't work we can cause a little bit of trouble. Hiromi. I say when that happens, not you. Don't jump the gun again. Hey Kamonechi. You know me? Hence the warning. He growled. All right Matako, I know you are fresh, but really should be a super easy job to get you back into it. Just follow my orders. Malcolm, you are up first to bite time if we need to. Uck. I don't want to talk to this asshole. Just do it, he'll make sure he sees that you don't like him if you want. You don't actually have to buy anything, just keep him busy. Just don't escalate into a fight. We want to avoid a gunfight. Good idea, I agreed earning some snickers from the others. All right break. He ordered and before I could take a step Hiromi had me by the arm. Come on, she urged me on and forced me to follow her down the concrete pathway. The ocean was right there. But right on the beach was a ton of broken down shanty towns. I remembered this area from the game. It was full of tiger claw people and it was pretty rough. Which was weird. Why was there a Valentino wannabe pusher hanging out trying to sell drugs here? That was. Suicidal. Stop freaking come on it'll be fun we get to sit and watch a fat Tino guy try to sell drugs to a bunch of kids. Entertainment for everyone, she said as she laughed, and I just shrugged. Honestly. I was just nervous. I didn't like this. Eventually Hiromi set me on a concrete coastal breaker and we just sat and overlooked the entire shanty town. Every once in a while we could see the target. Ichi had sent a picture of the man to everyone, and while he and Malcolm were hanging out closer to the guy Hiromi and I were on overwatch. Good luck Omar Ada. I muttered, earning a snort from Hiromi. He can do it. Not his first hot wire. But it is the first time he tried to take that car right? Hiromi groaned at my words. Uck stop being such a downer. We are making eddies here. Be happy. I'm just. I don't think I'm ready for this yet Hiromi. I still have so much to learn, and. It would have been nice if you asked first. PSSHT. You obviously just need to get back into the saddle. Why do you think I let you drive my bike? You picked it up again quick. You're just too hesitant now. Gotta get you used to doing again. I really don't think that's right, but I know you were trying to help. Just. Help a little less maybe, I said with a sigh as I patted her on the thigh. She just rolled her eyes at me and nudged my shoulder with hers. Target seems to be moving out of the slums. Malcolm. You are up. Distract. Oh my dear, time? Longer if you keep bothering me. The other boy replied before shutting down the call. Yikes. Not going well. All right Malcolm, remember try not to get him so pissed he pulls a gun. Girls, get closer in case we need you. Ichi offered before he too went quiet. Come on. Hiromi offered sounding serious for the first time since I met her. She stood and rushed down into the shanty town, cutting across a few rooftops before dropping down. Damn it, what happened to this being easy? I growled as I followed after Hiromi. Gently I released the catch on my holster, and sheath. Might need a quick draw. I almost lost sight of Hiromi as she was pretty quick across the roofs and I took a little longer. I didn't want to fall and break my stupid neck. But I caught up with her as she had stopped, peeking around a corner with her katana in her hand. I fell back on every bit of ninjutsu I had learned so far and did the same. Since I was taller than her I was able to peek out over her head. Malcolm was doing a good job I thought. He was actually waving an Eddie shard around in one hand while arguing with Gonzalez. The man wasn't really fat. Hiromi was just being mean. But he was definitely someone that I would have pegged as a Valentino if not for Richie's description. He had a lot of tattoos. The bad part was the two guards flanking him. Realizing that nothing serious was happening yet, I peeled back and straightened up looking casual as I crossed the street to Hiromi's shock as if I was just out for a stroll. I even looked over and rolled my eyes at the obvious drug deal as I crossed the little path and entered into a shanty house, disappearing from their sight. I kneeled down once I was out of sight and began circling around, to get closer. I wanted to get eyes on his guards. The two guys that I would have pegged for scavs. 
They were the sort of guys that were only considered muscle because they could shoot a gun. They were actually smaller than Gonzalez himself, but they were each carrying an SNG and they looked like they knew how to use it. And Malcolm was making himself a target. Fuck you Vato. Malcolm cussed purposefully using a Spanish word. I asked if you had some shit, but you keep trying to change the fucking subject. You have asked for three different drugs now. If you aren't buying then get out of my face. Or my friends will make you. Gonzalez growled and the much taller man was glaring balefully over a pair of gold-rimmed sunglasses that were pulled down to his nose. Man what fuck pusher comes here to sell drugs and doesn't fucking sell? What are you some corpo plant or some shit? Come here to spy? I could see his words were really riling up the man, and he wasn't hitting the point where his distraction was closer to a fight. I was trying to figure out what to do when an element of chaos was thrown in. Mal. God you piece of shit. There you are. Where is my fucking glitter? I sent you out to get one thing you useless fuck. Hiromi called out, sauntering into view naked blade in her hand but she was pointing it at Malcolm. Malcolm had a look of shock on his face before he figured it out. Oh come on babe, I'm working on it. See right here, this nice looking pusher has your glitter, don't you? Whatever your name is. Malcolm added. I don't sell glitter. Also back up. Or my friends will act. He ordered stepping back a bit from Hiromi who seemed to ignore the guy. The fuck Mal? You really been trying to get my high from a guy that don't even push? Fuck off. She growled nearly cutting Malcolm as she seemed to swing the blade in annoyance at the boy. Whoa. Watch it you bitch. Fuck. Malcolm yelled no longer acting as he checked his arm just to make sure he wasn't cut. Bitch. Fuck you. You piece of shit. I'll cut your balls off. She screamed. I honestly wasn't sure she was acting anymore either. Like I said. Chaos. Gonzalez though seemed to be done with this sideshow. He jerked his head. And to my shock before anything could be done, one of the guards came up and slammed Hiromi on the back of the head. The entire area went silent. Let's go. Take care of your very annoying girl boy. Gonzalez offered without a backwards glance, but his men were still pointing at Malcolm with their guns keeping him from doing more than glaring and cradling Hiromi. They started moving. But I wasn't able to see anything but Hiromi. My friend. Itchy. They are moving. Malcolm's voice called over our channel. I'm gonna have to look after Hiromi. I see it. Focus on Hiromi, make sure she is okay. Oh my Ada. Give me an update. Nothing. The security on this is too fucking tight. I need more time here. I think we need to abort this time, Itchy. This isn't working. Malcolm called, for once being a voice of reason. All I could see was the red dripping from Hiromi's head. Fuck that, Ichi said and that was it. Fuck. Fucking hotheads. All of them. I growled, tearing my eyes away from Hiromi. There was nothing I could do for her right this minute, but Ichi sounded like he was going to do something stupid. I hurried after sneaking through the shanty town to keep Gonzales and his people in sight. I had no idea where Ichi was, but I was really scared he was going to do something stupid. Just as the shanty town started to end, I saw him. Ichi was up ahead sitting on the concrete railing with his pistol in his hand resting in his lap. Full tiger claw regalia on display. The sight slowed Gonzales as well. You weren't in your territory Tino, Ichi said strongly. Tapping his pistol against his knee a bit. An explanation is needed. He was even playing up the Japanese accent, but I wasn't focused on that. I was watching Gonzales's men. I don't need to do shit, kid. You aren't even a tiger. I don't see a real tat or symbol on you. Get lost brat. Before my friends here flatline you. I realized Itchy was running out of time. He was trying to bluff, but Gonzalez wasn't looking to play along. His two guards were both raising their guns. Fuck. I growled, slowly crept out from the shanty, using every ounce of stealth I had learned so far to creep closer. Since they were all focused on Itchy and the noise of the city they didn't hear my feet gently tap against the concrete. Even if, to my ears it sounded like an explosion with every step. Every breath sounded like a hurricane. What the fuck was I doing? What the fuck was I going to do? I got closer, close enough that his guards were an arm's length of me, and I was standing at his back. People were just fucking blind here in Night City weren't they? 
Fuck it. My eyes instantly were drawn to the pistol at Gonzalez's hip. A stupid overly chromed out handgun. The sort of thing that is so ostentatious just thinking about using it makes you want to puke. So I clipped it. Quick draw, was a perk. Not a skill. It allowed me to draw and fire a weapon faster than nearly anyone, and would only get faster if my reflex skill improved. So I stepped forward even as Itchy's eyes widened, with my heart hammering. I quick drawed Gonzalez's own gun. And my own. Ambidextrous came into play before anyone realized what had happened. And I started putting bullets into the two guards. Both arms outstretched the guard on my right close enough I was practically punching the gun into his stomach as I started firing. It was chaos. And noise. And movement. It just. Happened. Shooting. The two guards flinching back, Gonzalez freaking out reaching for his gun that didn't exist in his holster anymore. My left arm ached from the stupid chromed out mega revolver Gonazels had. But the two guards were utterly surprised. Their aim was off as they both pulled the trigger. Bullets flew, and I kept my guns on target as best as I was able. Pulling the trigger over and over until finally the noise stopped. Ichi was there, his gun in Gonzalez's face, and the two guards? They were dying. I watched them a bit stunned as the one closest to me gargled and gasped on his own blood, his hand reaching and fumbling for his lost gun. The other one? Well it might be a stupid chromed out ugly revolver. But it was still a big fucking revolver. He was dead already. I stood there, realizing that the irritation over my eye was blood. That I was coated in it. The guard closest to me, had bled all over me. With a sigh. I pulled the revolver to my chest and popped my Unity's mag, grabbing the spare one that I had slipped into my holster for the gun, and did the frustrating dance of trying to keep four things in my hands at once as I replaced it with a new mag. I slipped the ugly revolver into the front of my pants after. It was empty anyways. And then I walked over to the guard that was still burbling. And put a bullet in his head. The noise caused Itchy and Gonzalez to flinch back as they both looked at me. I honestly had nothing to say. I was so. Blank? Cold? No. Cool. I was cool. What? I asked simply, as I bent down and grabbed the SMG. Holstering my pistol as I did so and started checking the guy over for loot. I felt so weird. I almost felt like humming. Was that weird? It was weird. I decided and didn't hum as I looted pockets for extra mags, and slipped the guy's Eddie shard out of his port. Pocketing that for myself. Then even as both guys were staring at me with a certain horror and shock, I moved to the next two SMGs. Nice. I wouldn't have to borrow one from the grizzled tiger claw guy at the range next time. I could just bring my own. Oh. I too meant I could give one to June that will be safer for him I bet. H hey. You okay? Itchy asked, breaking the quiet of the beach. Yeah? Fuck these guys. They hit my friend. I tell him simply. Yep. That made sense. They hurt Hiromi. So I could kill them. Or should kill them? Not sure. I'll think about it. Then I moved on glad that the SMGs had a little shoulder strap so I slipped one over my shoulder and readied the second one. We flatlined this guy too? I asked calmly, seeing the surprise and horror of the situation turn to real fear. H hey wait a minute. We can talk about this. We weren't supposed to flatline them. They were going to flatline you. I tell him simply with a look, which had him flinch a little. I was sure it was because I pointed out he was about to be killed and not because I was covered in blood. Definitely. Right. He uttered slowly as if he was dealing with a wild animal. Rude. You. I pointed at the idiot that caused all of this. W what? You got ammo for this disgrace of a gun? I demand pointing towards the revolver. He blinked before nodding slowly starting to reach for a pocket, which I raised the gun at him for. I'll check. I tell him firmly, as I walk up and start patting him down while Itchy keeps him at gunpoint. Finding a pocket full of ammo was nice, but they were all etched. Fucking wannabe. I muttered as I looked at the shell casings all having ornate crucifixes carved into them. I pocketed them anyway. Also found a few shards that looked like eddies so I snatched those and passed them to Itchy after. He is disarmed. I confirmed. As I didn't find any other weapons on him. Great. Just great. Let me. Let me think, he demanded. And I nodded as Itchy seemed to breathe a bit. 
This had definitely gone off the fucking rails. I could see Ichi make a call as his eyes glowed, so I instead focused on Gonzalez, which seemed to freak him out a bit as once more I had my shiny new SMG pointed at the fucker. I could see him sweat. And honestly my aim was getting a bit jittery. Alright, Ichi said aloud, finishing his call. Sorry Gonzalez. Nothing personal. Ichi offered, setting down a sentence on the man. His eyes widened, and Gonzalez moved. Realizing he was about to be flatlined the big wannabe Tina leapt to try and attack Ichi. Probably hoping to get his gun. A shot rang out. Motoko? Huh? I asked looking to Ichi. Gonzalez's corpse cooling at my feet. Barrel smoking. What just happened? Thanks. I didn't expect him to try and jump me. You okay? Okay? I asked confused. He blinked his eyes lighting up as he made a call. I looked down at Gonzalez. Well he won't be needing this anymore. I thought reaching down and snagging all the shards in his ports. Including his car access shard. I started walking back to Malcolm only to find Hiromi grumbling as she stumbled along held up by Malcolm. I'm fine. Let me see those fuckers I'll shove my sword up their ass. She called out sounding a little off as Malcolm hurried her along. Yeah come on Hiromi let's get you out of here, you need to see a doc. Malcolm grunted, keeping her moving. Malcolm. Ichi called out hurrying to help and with that they were dragging a grumbling Hiromi along. Her short height meant her feet weren't even touching the ground as they carried her. Holy shit, Malcolm whispered as he caught sight of me. Wa? Wa ah? Motoko. You're hurt. Who did it? I'll kill him. Hiromi nearly screamed struggling a bit in the two boys' grip. I reached out and put a hand against her cheek stilling her. Not my blood. I'm fine. Come on Hiromi you are hurt. Let's get out of here. I told her calmly which took the wind out of her sails. Despite the fact I could see her eyes not quite focusing right she quieted. Wow. She muttered and then the next thing I knew we were standing by the car. Omaida still cursing as Ichi asked him if he had gotten in yet. Fuck no. This shit security is top notch. Bullshit fucking car. Here. I told him simply holding out the shard I had taken from Gonzalez. Fuck. He grumbled taking the shard from me and slotting it and a moment later the car unlocked. Not a word, he demanded from Michi but the boy didn't look like he wanted to say anything. Hiromi was quickly grumbling, arguing and struggling as the boys tried to pull her inside. I'm not leaving my bike here. It'll get clapped. I'll drive it. Stop holding me down you gonk brain. I reached in and pushed a finger against Hiromi's port, finding the right one, I poked her. Give me the keys, I'll drive it. I told her, and while everyone was giving me wide-eyed looks Hiromi did as I said. A moment later it was slotted in my neck. I dumped the SMGs on the floor of the Olvado. And took the stupid revolver and put in inside as well, and walked over to Hiromi's bike. Honestly I still hated the stupid swoopy back seat. But I clambered on and started it up. Looking at the boys that were still staring at me before they noticed my attention and hurriedly got the more compliant Hiromi in order. Omaida drove out of the parking lot me following behind him. I felt jittery. But all I had to do was follow the taillights in front of me. Easy. Easy easy. Dash. Next thing I knew I stopped. We weren't at the club. No, instead I noticed it was a ripper dock. Ichi hauled and annoyed Hiromi inside but I stayed out with the car and the bike. I was feeling floaty. Also pretty cool. Well I would probably be cooler without all the blood on my face. Eventually Ichi came back out, and he said something about staying here, or following and I just shrugged. We drove off again with me tailing this time we stopped at the club. Although we went in through a garage beside it. Hiding the car we had stolen from sight. Inside I finally slipped off the Kusanagi. Honestly if not for the stupid alteration to it. Well I wanted one. I really wanted to do a power slide in one. Like so bad. My attention wavered, and I noticed that Itchy was there suddenly beside me gently touching my shoulder. What's up Itchy? I asked confused as he startled before relaxing. Hey Motoko, why don't we go inside, we can get you cleaned up a bit okay. Sure. I guess. I answered and he seemed to want to guide me inside despite me being perfectly fine. Weirdo. But I was led into the back of the club where a tiger claw woman was waiting. She was looking a little irritated, 
until she caught sight of me, and her eyes which were glowing gold, and actually slitted. Okay that is kinda cool. Widened as she saw me. Yeah I'll take care of it. You go, she demanded and then she walked up to me and wrapped an arm over my shoulder. Let's get you washed up. Can't have you looking bad after a gig. Yeah? Yeah, I agreed that was true. I let her guide me into a bathroom and she was washing me down with a towel in the sink. Poor towel. It had been white, but it was now brown and red. Gonna have to toss that after probably. I doubted it was really washable. But eventually the towel stopped leaving the water it was washed with red, and the woman nodded. You did a good job. Kept your tomb safe. Don't worry about this. Everyone gets a little off at first. Just remember you saved your tomb. That's what matters. She says simply after putting both hands on my shoulders. Then she nods and gently tugs me along guiding me back out the bathroom. I still felt floaty, but my eye wasn't irritated with blood anymore. That was nice. She settled me into the same spot that I had first met the gang. It must be an official young tiger claw table or something, Itchy and Omaida were already there. Malcolm was missing though. Hey guys. I offered simply as I settled onto the table. What does she want to drink? The tiger claw woman asked but as the boys started talking I interrupted. Something fizzy and sweet, but no alcohol. The taste makes me sick. Usually I get a real drink for first timers. But alright, she agreed and disappeared. She is nice. I told the boys who both nodded slowly at me. Hiromi is going to be okay? Yeah the doc said it was just a concussion. We will pick her up after. Cool. Cool. I'm pretty cool. Did you see how I killed them both? I even took that gonk's own gun. Uck that gun is the worst. Malcolm, you look like the kind of guy that would chrome out his gun, but please never do that. It makes you look like a joke. Really he even had the bullets etched. Look at these I said pulling out one of the rounds from my pocket. What kind of cunt etches his rounds? A foolish one. Soon to lose them I believe. A voice interrupted my word vomit as I blinked and looked up. Oh it was the boss guy. Something something summer. Shobo summer, Ichi said standing and offering a bow. I just blinked and nodded. Well he did lose it, so I guess that fits. I offered simply getting a chuckle. The mission didn't go as planned. He spoke to Ichi sounding, not quite happy. No sir. The security on the car was better than expected, and he started heading back almost as soon as we got there. We had to make time, but... He assaulted one of my squad thankfully non-lethally, and then, well, I tried to confront him. He was going to flatline me. So Martico stepped in. I see. He nodded looking towards me with a nod. A lucky chum to have on hand it seems. Well the gig is completed even if I am not entirely satisfied. I had wanted the man stranded, not dead. But plans change. The eddies. He offered and I could see Itchy flinch a bit before nodding and seeming thanks. Let's have your next job go a little smoother. Although if you bring along this one again, perhaps I can think of some other jobs for you to do. He offered looking to me. I didn't know what to say or do. Did I nod? I nodded. He seemed pleased. Oh good right answer then? Man this was so easy. Just nod and that was the right answer. E-R-S-C. Suddenly I blinked at the taste of something sweet on my tongue. I looked down. Oh that is kinda nice. I said looking at the can of some weird soda that I had just taken a drink of. When did that get there? Back with us? The tiger woman asked from beside me. I blinked. Was I somewhere else? Only for a while. Nothing to worry about boys, this isn't abnormal. The woman said looking from me to Itchy and Malcolm who both looked a little pale. Weird. I informed them as I took another drink of the soda. The carbonation was nice. Motoko. I jerked at the voice looking up. Juni. The boy looked frazzled as he pulled me up into a hug holding me tight as he crushed me into his chest. This was nice. But June was hugging a bit too tight. Too tight. I grumbled at him which had him go way too loose. Silly June, we have to grind your hugging skill if this is what I get. You are okay, no injuries. He demanded looking me over. I'm fine. I didn't even get touched. I mean I was the one who shot them. I tell him informing him I had been the murderer in the circumstances. What's wrong with her? He demanded turning to the boys. I just told him I was fine though. She has been. Like that since. 
Ichi spoke up, sounding quiet. She is fine boy. The tiger woman said walking up behind June, another soda in her hand. Here girl drink this. Oh thank you. I tell her popping the tab and taking a drink. Nice. This one tasted different. Just give her time. The woman said which was weird. I don't think I need time. Time is just time. Weird. Sure girl. She replied, quickly. Ah that's good she understood. June swiftly was glaring at everything but me. Ah he was doing that stress angry thing. June was such a hothead. June is such a hothead. I poke his brow where his skin crinkled when he got mad. I'm not angry. He growls obviously angry, not quite snapping at me. I just nodded at him a white light to agree with him. I reached for my drink and accidentally knocked it over. Purple soda spread across the table. Only it was red. Wow. Red. Red. Like the blood that had been spreading across the concrete when I murdered two men. I puked. Right on June's shoes.